Now, you might not know this, but each and every day, a whopping 8 million pieces of plastic invade our oceans. And according to the World Economic Forum, our waterways are currently choking in 75 to 199 million tonnes of plastic. Now, a 29-year-old Dutch entrepreneur is on a relentless mission to wipe out 90% of the plastic pollution by 2040. Oboyan Slet is the CEO and founder of the Ocean Cleanup. It's a non-profit organisation that deploys cutting-edge technology to save our our rivers and seas. And he joins us now from the Netherlands. So thanks for joining us, uh, Boyan. I want to talk about last year, which was a momentous year for you. Your organization, you attempted the largest cleanup in history, scooping up, what, 11,000 kilograms of waste in just one single extraction. Unpack mm. for us, what is the underlying technology being used to make all of this happen? Yeah, so to rid the oceans of plastic, we need to do two things. We need to stop more plastic from getting into the ocean, but we also need to clean up the plastic that's already out there, the legacy pollution. And by far the largest accumulation is the so-called Great Pacific Garbage Patch between Hawaii and California. Uh, it's three times the size of France. And uh, to clean that up, we, uh, we have a solution that's basically 50% hardware, 50% software. So on the hardware side, we have this huge U-shaped floating barrier that's two and a half kilometers in length, which, which we can sweep an area the size of a football field every five seconds. But then, of course, if we would just randomly go through the ocean, it wouldn't be very effective. So we also have advanced uh, computer models to guide us to intelligently um, determine how, what the best route is through the garbage patch to tackle what we call hot spots. So that, um, you know, if all goes well, we can actually clean up the patch in about 10 years. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I also want to touch on these interceptors that you have. Well, basically, scientists, they found that like a thousand rivers around the world are responsible for 80% uh, of the plastic in rivers that actually ends up in the ocean. And to solve this, you use a kind of river cleanup technology, am I right? They're called interceptors. And um, how does it work in a nutshell? Yeah, yeah, and the, the Thousand River study is actually from 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 our scientists. So um, the the way we um, we do this is we have um, a portfolio of different types of interceptors, which are you know barriers that can be uh, sort of almost like vacuum cleaners for the river that we put in the mouth of these rivers, and they they intercept the plastic before it can even reach the ocean. And uh, we now have. Uh, 14 of those around the world. We expect to have 20 uh, very soon. They're across Southeast Asia. They're across uh, Central America. Because what we see is that in um, you know, middle-income countries, uh, you know, people do have enough wealth to consume a lot of plastic, but there's no good waste infrastructure yet. So that's where we see the, lar the largest leakage. And ultimately, we want to deploy these systems in, in all of those 1,000 rivers around the world. And with that, not just clean up the plastic that's already out there, but also uh, prevent more from coming in. And you have these AI cameras on bridges that also sort of scans and looks up for um, how much plastic accumulates in the, in the rivers. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, for us, it wasn't just a challenge of coming up with solutions. Um, no, the first challenge for us was actually to uh, to get the data on the problem itself. You know, when we started, nobody knew how big this garbage patch was, where the plastic was, which rivers to tackle. So indeed, through through both modeling as well as, uh, you know, a lot of data gathering with cameras, with nets, et cetera, uh, we were able to, you know, create this unprecedented view on the problem, which is something we really need because we don't want to deploy in a river where it's not actually very important, right? So before, so in, essentially when you think of our product, it's, uh, you know, we go to a city, we assess all the rivers in terms of which ones need to be tackled. Uh, and then we, you know, pr uh, propose the right solution. We bring together the partners, you know, the waste management partner, the government, uh, the operator, and then we make sure that it runs itself sustainably. Uh, Boyan, I mean, like, um, would you say that some of your solutions are quite expensive? Because, uh, you know, I've read some experts basically commenting that your organization strategies might not be so efficient because cost-wise being one factor. And um, is there any latest update on your, your key performance indicator, which is your cost to cleaning ratio? Because running those, those vessels are very costly yeah. affairs, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's, I think there's two things to say about that. So, of course, if you think of it in terms of per kilo, uh, it would be much cheaper to go to 
um, you know, to uh, you know, garbage can in the middle of the city rather than the middle of the ocean, right? Uh, but the thing is, only a very small fraction of the plastic that's produced ends up in the ocean. It's less than 0.1%. So in terms of the plastic that actually does harm, uh, you know, by tackling the stuff that's flowing out of rivers, by tackling the stuff that's ready in the ocean, you're actually much more effective because you don't have to deal with all this plastic that wouldn't even make it out to the ocean. Um, and secondly, you know, the plastic problem is, you know, the status quo is very expensive. So, um, you know, the world spends tens of billions of dollars or suffers from damages worth tens of billions of dollars every year in terms of tourism, in terms of fisheries, uh, in terms of human health. So uh, we believe it's you know, a lot, a lot cheaper to intercept this plastic in rivers and to cleaning up already in the oceans uh, than to just leave it out there and let it do harm for, for decades, yeah, if not and, centuries. And Boyan, I mean, we're looking at images now um, of how it works. And I'm sorry if this sounds like a basic question, but how do we prevent like dolphins and fish and all that marine life, you know, being caught up in, in, in that giant net uh, that you have? Yeah, so with the oceans, because we move very slowly, we move at roughly half your walking speed. Um, that gives enough uh, time for marine life to get out of the way. So, uh, yeah, in terms of bycatch, it's 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 super low. It's like zero point one percent. Of course, it will never be zero. Um, but the yeah, uh, if you in terms of the you know the, the harm it prevents, you know, it's it's really quite staggering what we see out there. We see. Uh, you know, so many turtles stuck in these abandoned fishing nets in, you know, have their stomachs full of plastic. Um, so, yeah, so in terms of the, the bycatch, it's it's very low and we never catch anything Good to like, know. like dolphins. Good to know, Boyan. Now, I want to talk about Asia because you've got uh, quite a few um projects, uh, you know, in your bag. You've, you've got the interceptor deployments in rivers mm. throughout Asia, from Indonesia to India, and you've opened your regional office in KL last year. Uh, talk, talk a little bit with us about your expansion plans in Asia, and what's the rationale for that? Yeah, I mean, so Asia is extremely important for us uh, because, you know, there's for two reasons. On one hand, there's a lot of plastic emissions in this part of the world. And on the other hand, um, you know, it also is a is an area of, of exceptional uh, natural uh, beauty, right, and, and natural resources. So, um, you know, to protect the coral reefs in Indonesia, you know, you need to put systems in the rivers in Indonesia. Um, so, yeah, so we have a, our first deployments now in, in Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Bangkok will be deployed uh, very shortly. Um, indeed, we're looking at India as well um, and Vietnam. We already have an interceptor there too. Um, and uh, yeah, in the coming years, we uh, we hope to bring many more interceptors uh, to to the region. And because of that, indeed, we decided to also have a you know a more local presence, uh, and we expect to expand that as well in uh, in the years to come. Well, but but you know, Boyan, in a blink of an eye, 2040 is just you know uh, we're going to reach 2040, and you've got this big bold ambition to get rid of 90 percent of plastics in ocean by then. And um, yeah. some some people, you know, the question of feasibility of your ambition in terms of your your roadmap to get there what do you think is going to be the biggest hurdle is it is it funding is it the fact that you got to find very talented yeah. engineers yeah what is it yeah I, I think we can do it faster than than 2040 i think it's sort of the, wow. the worst case um <laughs> that, that line but i'd like to get it done in like you know under under 10 years for sure um so, you know, in terms of Bono, you know, the first thing we really need is to complete our first 20 rivers. Those are the projects that are currently ongoing. Um, and we really need to, we want to nail those so that we exactly know how to do it to, to make mistakes now so that we don't have to make mistakes with a thousand rivers, right? So that, that's kind of the idea. First, start small before we go big. Um, and, you know, once we have that, it, it, I think the bottleneck will be the relationships with the governments. You're talking about, you know, many cities, um, you know, a lot of them uh, have you know, many priorities, right, in, in these upcoming economies. Uh, so to make sure we you know, have a, a sufficient speed when it comes to you know, getting the contracts in place, getting the, you know, the permits, as well as the operational cost coverage, we, we want that to be local. Uh, I, I think that's going to be 
um, the main bottleneck. At the same time, you know, we look for for companies, for individuals to to partner with us, uh, because of course, um, you know, we, we, the funding is required to actually build the hardware and to to deploy that. So um, yeah, but first things first, first completing those twenty rivers, and then but you know, by the end of the year, we hope to be ready to to start scaling to uh, you know the next hundred rivers, and then ultimately, if we've done a hundred rivers, I think we can also do a thousand. Oh, we certainly need more people like you. Boyan Slate, thanks so very much for joining us uh, today, CEO and founder of The Ocean Cleanup.